We're back here live in the Diego Armando Maradona Stadium in Naples. Live on Talk Sport, Italy, England is coming up. They've literally just started uh, the video and light show in memory of Gianluca Vialli, Italian icon, adopted English son, title winner with Sampdoria and Juventus, Champions League winning captain with Juve, won the FA Cup, League Cup, and Cup, Winners' Cup as player manager of Chelsea. But beyond all of that, anyone who knew him well has spoken highly of him and even those who maybe only met him once spoke positively about him. I was one of those. Met Viali once. Day became Watford manager. I was at Vicarage Road. Interviewed him. Uh, found him to be warm, charming and funny. Wonderful man. Uh, before the interview, he joked about what questions he wanted to be asked. After the interview, we shook hands. He walked away to get on with his new job. Turned and said he enjoyed it, which meant the world, I've got to say. Uh, but that was how warm and generous he was as a human. He wasn't just a wonderful footballer and prolific striker. Died on January the 6th in London. Pancreatic cancer got him for a second time. Uh, Viali played here in this stadium when uh, Neapolitans supported Maradona and Argentina over their own Italy team in the 1990 World Cup semi-final. Before the penalty shootout, Viali was replaced by Aldo Serena, who missed the crucial spot kick in that semi-final. Italy have played one game in 20 years here in Naples, but there was a crucial game back in 87, uh, beating Sweden 2-1 here to secure qualification for the Euros. And you guessed it, Gianluca Vialli got both goals in Naples that day. He was the assistant, of course, to Mancini, who said yesterday he feels a great emptiness every day and said that everything Vialli left us must be useful for our present and for our future. The Italy players will be wearing a shirt with the words Luca Azzurro per sempre, Luca Blue Forever, written into the collar. A really lovely touch and uh, a beautiful tribute paid and respectfully observed by all in the stadium as well as the photographers gather at the uh, side of the stretch a long stretch from the uh, tunnel through beyond the running track the tunnel goes over the deep moat and uh, the players on their way out over the running track and they will be uh, lining up very very shortly ahead of the national anthems the England flag to the right as the players peel off towards their flag the Italian flag to our left Sparklers flying sparks into the night sky on the far side of the stadium as Italy prepare to take on England inside this stadium. An oval bowl, blue and white seating, running track and deep motor. Pitch invasion by fans would be quite an achievement here, I have to say, as we prepare for the national anthems of both the English national anthem will be the first one to be sung expect it to be booed all the players names were booed as well it'll be sung by the uh, award winning singer Elinora performed by two Naples natives, Gigi D'Alessio and the rapper Clementino. Now stand by for something a little bit different. I don't think you're going to believe what you're about to hear. Wow, no 
not quite Pacelli. Rome, summer 2021, definitely not Pavarotti, Italia 90. And by the way, there were all sorts of technical problems in the rehearsal for Eleonora singing the English national anthem. I think those were replicated uh, during the actual thing, so I've got a feel for uh, the singer uh, in terms of uh, that. But I think she came through it okay. As the players all shake hands, and on we go. This is TalkSport. This is your England radio station. We're live in Naples on TalkSport, live from the Diego Armando Maradona Stadium. As the Italian daily sports newspaper Gazzetta della Sport said this morning, England never beat Italy. Gareth Southgate's message to his players this week is that they now have to start consistently winning against the blue chip nations and that starts tonight here in Naples it's the first qualifier for the next Euros Italy against England live on TalkSport with your commentary team our former England captain Stuart Pearce alongside Jim Proudfoot and so it begins again the first step on the next journey towards a tilt at glory the latest attempt to bring it home and how fitting that this European voyage begins as the last one ended. A date with Italy, still fresh from being cast as Wembley heartbreakers on a night when continental glory was snatched tantalisingly from the three Lions' grasp. Since that sultry Wembley evening, both have suffered mixed fortunes. England's hapless Nations League campaign more than negated in Qatar. In a World Cup, Italy had to watch on TV whilst anticipating their trip to the Nations League finals. Just six months ago, local journalists reckoned it was the weakest Azuri side they'd ever seen. A position that softened a little, but not since the early days of the Roman Empire have the Italians been in such a constant phase of rebuilding. But England entered this qualification campaign with continuity. The sense of direction that had eluded them amidst mitigating circumstances last summer fully restored. This first test, the toughest in the group, away to the number one seeds a fixture where the weight of recent history leans all one way victory could go a long way towards shaping the 16 months ahead England line up with Pickford in goal Walker Stones, Maguire and Shaw Phillips and Rice Saka, Bellingham and Grealish and the record chasing Harry Kane Italy, Donnarumma in goal Di Lorenzo Toloi, Acerbi and Spinazzola Barella, Jorginho, Verratti Berardi, Rotegi and Pellegrini well, 2023 will be Napoli's year, when a long way to return to glory will finally materialise after years of frustration and the odd near miss. How fitting then that Naples is the point of departure for England's latest attempt at completing that same voyage from agony to ecstasy. They carry with them optimistic dreams that perhaps have a little bit more substance this time than on many of the previous 28 fruitless voyages the road to Berlin starts here, and every step of the journey will be live on Talk Sport. Alongside me, Stuart Pearce. Well, I hope the Italian building job is as fierce as the one at uh, Pompeii that I was at a couple of days ago. If it is, we've got a chance of uh, getting a decent result here, but I think this isn't going to be anything but easy, this game. I think there's not much to choose between both sides, certainly on Italian soil. Italy in all blue, shirts, shorts and socks. They kick from left to right and in this big, huge bowl of a stadium with its light blue running track, the England supporters, as if we're sitting at six o'clock, they are away to our right-hand side at four o'clock. Italy will be able to bring it forward. England in all white, defending the end away to our right-hand side. And Maguire over just a step forward from the defensive line to poke the ball away. And then an opportunity for England to get it out towards Bakar Saka over on the far touch line, the England right hand side. Jordan Pickford played it inside his own penalty area, finding Maguire now down towards Luke Shaw. And the boos and whistles tell you that it's England in possession. First touch for Kane, who I thought had won a throw, splitting it off Barella. But the referee has said that there was no deflection, and it's out of play for a throw which will be taken by. Di Lorenzo on the Italian right. Nil nil, couple of minutes gone here on Talk Sport. At the old Stadio Sao Paulo, the Diego Armando Maradona Stadium here in Naples. And free kick given away. Barella, the man that has uh, gone down, was just putting his hand to his uh, mouth to make sure that I think all his teeth are still in there. It was a flailing arm by Jude Bellingham that caught him. And a free kick to Italy, which will be taken about three yards in from the right hand touchline. Maybe 15 adrift at the edge of the penalty area. 
And I think Italy have started pretty uh, with a very good tempo about what they're trying to achieve. Got forward very well there. Worked the ball to the edge of the box, and it was I think it was Verratti who just looked and weren't sure whether the ball was for him or not. Delayed and. England managed to tidy things up, but they've got a good opportunity here out wide on the right hand side to put the ball in the box. Abaradi leaves it, he's spun inside the penalty area and a complete miss kick from a really good position. Which drifts, drifts innocuously wide of Jordan Pickford's near post. That was a great chance for a Cherby, it could have been 1 0 to Italy, so the only four minutes. Yeah, good, good uh, well worked free kick there. I'm not sure whether he'd have just strayed offside, that would have been pretty close, but. Certainly will work, ball spotted, player stepped away and ball whipped in. Verratti bustling in the midfield, Jorginho that's able to take control of things. Diving headed, ball through the midfield from Calvin Phillips is uh, easily knocked away. Stones can bring it down in the back for England. And well laid all the way back for Jordan Pickford. Safe from Bellotti and Jorginho in that ill-fated shootout in the Euros final. Winning his 51st cap for his country tonight, Jordan Pickford. And here's Harry Maguire, who's three ahead of him. Now the Stones, plenty of experience in this England back line, but a misplaced pass there from Phillips, who was looking for Rice to his left and played it away from him. Jorginho picking things up in the midfield for Italy. They will work it back, and now Toloi will bring it forward. Very tall, long-legged central defender very upright running style bad towards Di Lorenzo, Di Lorenzo working it round the corner, Rice has attracted the run of Berardi back to the edge of the penalty area, Phillips should be able to get it away quite easily and it's a well one back again by Berardi an opportunity for Berardi to try and get a shot in but he just wanted a little bit too long and Carl Walker will be able to dig it clear, Saka can't get it to stick England have lost possession again around the edge of the penalty area. Another opportunity to work it in. England knock it away for a corner. It's all Italy inside the opening five minutes here on Talksport. This is a bit of a trait that I see with England a little bit. They want to play their way into the game, get a bit of possession at the back. And the Italians have said, you know what, we're not going to do that. We're going to come straight off you and get the ball in behind you as quickly as we can. And, and it's rocked England. They've given the ball away cheaply on about three occasions now. So the first corner of the game will be taken on the Italian left. They've got Di Lorenzo standing right in front of the goalkeeper. And now four making runs in towards the edge of the six-yard box. A little near post flick header. Ended up just going wide. No harm done from an England perspective. But it was first contact from an Italian player as well. Well, met by Rotegi. Just a little darting near post flick. But couldn't get enough on it. And it's gone wide. I'll tell you what, at this moment in time, we're only early moments into the game, but at present, England are not to the pace of the game that the Italians are offering. And it was good movement there by Rotegi, who got first contact with no one anywhere near him. Pickford works the goal kick short. England determined to play out from the back. It goes back for Pickford again. When he does chip it forward, he's done well to find Luke Shaw. He can work it round the corner to find Bellingham. Bellingham now to Jack Grealish, good return ball for Bellingham who pirouetted as he received possession. England 10 yards from the edge of the penalty area, Grealish running across the edge of the box. Did he fall over his own feet? That's how the referee saw it. Jack Grealish convinced that he was fouled by Di Lorenzo, referee Ivanovic much less so. Italy work an instant ball forward through the middle looking for Rotegi, big unit of a striker on his international debut but he can't get there. And the ball ends up safely from an England perspective back at the feet of Jordan Pickford. Six and a half minutes gone, it's nil-nil here in Naples, live on Talk Sport. A beautiful day in this part of the world, just uh, up the Amalfi Coast. Hardly a cloud in the sky, a little bit chilly at night, but no hint of rain in the air. It's a beautiful March evening for playing football, but uh, cool enough not to offer any problems at all for either set of players. With England in possession with Declan Rice. And Rice will take it out towards the right-hand touchline and deposit the ball at the feet of Carl Walker. Into the feet of Saka. Saka's got Spinazzola, the Italian left-back, just nibbling at his heels. And the ball has gone out of play for a throw that will be taken by England on the right-hand side. It's nil-nil. And here's a man that knows this ground pretty well. Played the last time England were here, Stuart Pearce. Yeah, it's... Um 
England really need to either nullify the Italians' attack and, and quell what they're doing, or alternatively get some possession play f- in forward areas. Saka will take it on inside the penalty area and stretching. He did get a shot in, but he was stretching and couldn't really get any purchase behind the right-footed effort, and it was comfortably saved by Donnarumma. But a shot on target for England, who uh, survived that opening nervy five six minute spell and now beginning to try and get on the front foot themselves but they've given a free kick away in the midfield here yeah definite free kick there played out and uh, just under a little bit of pressure there the Italians the odd panicky moment for them and it was Saku who got his shot away but stretching on it no real pace on it and Donnarumma going down to his right and made a comfortable sort of fielding save if you like to Loy to Di Lorenzo it is a, an ageing Italian side, despite the fact that they're in the middle of a rebuilding process. And we'll take you the striker is 23, every other outfield player 26 or older. And they're maybe two years a man older than England. And Shaw is forced to stretch to try and steer the ball away from Barella. England will work it forward and Bellingham has done well. Coming in off the left flank, oh, he's barged to the ground by two Italian players there. A sandwich between Toloi and also Jorginho, and Saloy gave him a little shove with his shoulder and he was going to ground and then Jorginho, who's the other side, just shoved him back the other way. Yeah, really good play there by Bellingham, turned on the ball, drove between two defenders and between the pair of them brought them down, obviously plead innocence and uh, managed to get away without a booking on that occasion. So a free kick that Luke Shaw will stand over, and Wittegui is making the point that well, perhaps the free kick is being taken from the wrong place the referee Jovanovic has just asked Shaw to move it about a foot and a half to his left Carl Walker stayed back everybody else forward the Italians keeping a high line about five yards from the edge of the box England's first set piece opportunity swung in deep by Shaw headed back across towards Harry Kane but steered away from him out for England's first corner yeah good opportunity there England players jostling on the Italian back line Good movement by Phillips, certainly, to make the Italian line drop off. And then first contact uh, by Maguire. Interesting to see in the midfield three. It's almost a match-up man for man in the midfield three with the England three just picking a man. Barella in and around uh, Rice at this present moment. Saka to take the corner. It's a left-footed in swing and it's an awkward one for Donnarumma who's punched it high. For what would have been another corner where the referee has spotted a push on it. And it's a free kick that the Italians will take. This is actually the first time Stuart England have played a qualifier against a side ranked higher than them in the uh, ELO rankings for more than 20 years. The last time it happened, the famous 5-1 win in Munich back in September 2001. But it has been a problem, Adrian alluding to it in the build-up here on TalkSport, that... England haven't got a good enough record against the, the real stellar sides of world football. Haven't won any of the last five games against higher rated teams since beating Belgium at Wembley back in 2020. And in fact, we've won three out of 15 since Gareth took charge against sides ranked higher than them in the world. Something that England need to try and find an answer to. Kane putting some Good, oppres- uh, good pressure on at the front here. So too Saka, but a Cherby laid it back for his goalkeeper. And it's played right for the left back, Spinazzola. And Spinazzola will breeze past Calvin Phillips. Rice comes in, puts a challenge in, can't divert the ball wide of the uh, Italian left winger Pellegrini. It looks as though the ball had gone out of play for a corner there, but the uh, referee said play on. England get it away. Kane's done well to turn in the midfield. Grealish then similarly did well to control the ball. And England have got two against one on the right-hand side. Bellingham's going to be able to bring it forward and fire it towards goal. And Donnarumma tips it over the bar. England get a corner. The Italians are absolutely convinced that they should have had one. But it's Jude Bellingham driving forward. And every game he plays for England, he looks more of a part. He certainly does, as I say, top quality build up there. It was then uh, switched to Kane in the central area. He whipped the ball out to uh, Grealish. Grealish feeding it out wide. And uh, Bellingham didn't need a second opportunity to unleash a hell of a shot. 
Harry Maguire's name being sung by the England fans away to our right. One of the targets for Spakayo Saka corner. Another left footed in swinging delivery. Falls for Kane. It's blocked. And then lashed in. England lead. It ricocheted around the edge of the penalty area. Kane with the initial effort. And it broke back down on the edge of the box. Declan Rice was in there. And it is England that have a 13th minute lead. Well, Kane's in initial effort blocks all kinds of pinball inside the six yard box but Rice there to put his foot through it and what a start this is to the qualification campaign for England who lead in Italy 1-0 well not a bad way to reply to uh, criticism friendly criticism from Sue Ness and Keane about you don't get enough goals well done to uh, Declan Rice he was there on the spot it was first off Kane who unloaded one and then it fell to Declan Rice who swung the left foot and then it went the Italians are desperate for a, some form of free kick in this melee but I'm sure there wasn't one there well it's a goal that comes from an England corner the Italians not happy convinced it should have been a corner at the other end proud of that England won their own corner after that decision had gone their way and then took advantage of the set piece. Declan Rice scoring his third international goal. He scored against Iceland back in 2020 in Hungary last season and now in Naples tonight. This is a ground where England have a 100% record. A big Spain here in the 1980 European Championships. Beat Cameroon here famously in 1990 and they lead tonight in 2023 by a golden ill and those travelling supporters in fine voice away to our right Italy looking for an early response ball fired inside the penalty area Pickford can catch it and it is Italy nil, England 1 live on TalkSport well after a few early skirmishes in, in the uh, first exchanges it's certainly uh, England who've got the ascendancy now first corner that come in Saka whipped it in the referee give a free kick but the second one the Italians looking very un unnervy and it was Kane freed up for the first shot and then Rice finishing off Stones taking a touch bringing it outside the penalty area and finding Harry Maguire there's a Really nervy opening four or five minutes that England had had to endure. Italy flying out of the traps at them. England weathering that storm, stringing a couple of very promising moves together. And then the old MO. England from a set piece, 1 0. And now Bellingham has it again in the midfield. Bellingham brought down. The referee says play on with England initially in possession. There was no real advantage. Carl Walker forced back. So referee Ivanovic has pulled play back and given England the free kick inside the centre circle. Italy nil, England one. England standing over it. Bellingham has had a really lively start to this game. Free kick punted forward towards Harry Kane, trying to turn it out at the left-hand side for Jack Grealish. Work back towards Shaw. Shaw now to Maguire. Dark hair, thick set. Manchester United player who's had a dozen starts in all competitions for Manchester United this season albeit that he's only had three league starts in the last seven months three more than Calvin Phillips has had and Phillips waiting for the ball now in the midfields play back is there for England's goal scorer Declan Rice Walker back for Stones Ford's inside his own penalty area he's actually behind Jordan Pickford as he did so and then getting the ball to his feet sprays one down towards the left hand side for Luke Shaw Shaw inch perfect into the feet of Kane Kane just behind Grealish he chases the pass himself and his industry reward is Grealish is able to pick it up and a brilliant play by Shaw gets around Di Lorenzo but he can't find Saka with a low skidding cross that Donnarumma can gather yeah England playing like a team that are comfortable with each other playing like a, almost a club side at the moment you can see the confidence and know-how and uh as I say, just the understanding amongst each other at present. Here's Toloi. Play forward towards Jorginho. And now it's Cherby, able to bring the ball forward. It still takes a little bit of getting used to, to see neither Benucci nor Chiellini at the 
heart of the Italian defence. Italy work it down to the uh, left-hand side of the uh, England penalty area. Jordan Pickford has to have quick hands just to whisk the ball inside the penalty area, make sure that he uh, timed that to perfection and didn't handle it before it went outside the box. Phillips back for Rice. And now out towards Kyle Walker on the England right. Saka driving forward, trying to make a run round the back of Spinazzola. It's cleared out towards Calvin Phillips. Phillips driving for Saka then gets it back. Turn back through the midfield. An optimistic attempt at a crossfield ball. Look for Luke Shaw, but was cut out. Italy, since going 1 0 down, have seen England dominate possession. Play forward here by Maguire. Kane, though, has fouled his man. Free kick taken quickly by Verratti. And referees actually give Ann ball there. I mean, the ball was fired into Harry Kane. He took a touch. He's bounced up and hit his hand. And the referee was all too keen to give a handball. And I, I do get confused this day and age with some decisions referees come out with. Uh, Cherby looking to play in Spinazzola and missed him from close range. And it's like the goal has knocked the stuffing out of the Uzuri Stewart with the opening six minutes belonging to Italy the next six England grew into the game and the six subsequent minutes that we've had here on TalkSport and since England took the lead they've been much the better side yeah I totally agree as I say they look as though they've been uh, just had one on their chin and they're just taking a standing count at the moment the Italians but England are, are growing in, into confidence what they've just got to make sure they don't give any silly passes away like they did uh, in the earlier minutes been fortunate enough to cover any mistakes up so far Walker turns and gets the ball clear of Verratti. Bounces in front of a Cherby who has to hook it over his own shoulder. In doing so, can only find Calvin Phillips. Tennyson ball four from him. Bellingham taking a touch, getting past the man. Oh, what a wonderful little straight ball through towards Saka. Big claims from the England players. That should be a penalty, but nothing given. No hand ball. And Italy are going to be able to bring it away. Get it towards Verratti. Jorginho's got it now. Back from him to Toloi. And Toloi, 20 yards inside his own half, has the opportunity to bring it forward for the Italians again. Yeah, I think there was a, a double frustration there with England, a potential handball in the box afterwards, but certainly uh, Bellingham was uh, impeded, and that was a free kick. Referee let that go. I think he could have pulled that one back. The Cherby, motoring four from centre-half, loses out to Phillips, no foul. Phillips gives it to Rice, England will get the bodies forward quickly, four against four, and they've worked it past Verratti, and it goes to Kane on the right-hand side of the penalty, area. driven across, and just too far ahead of Bellingham. Yeah, at this moment, this is springing my mind back to, was it that Spain away game, where we counter-attacked really well against a, a Spanish side, and had great cutting edge at the moment, the Italians coming on to us, looking a bit loose, and that energy that we have in our team is, is there for all to see. Now that's certainly one of the very best performances that England mustered under Gareth Southgate back in October 2018. Three up England were in that game inside 40 minutes in Seville. Ended up winning it 3-2. The blueprint really for counter-attacking football. England haven't really been able to replicate those standards since. But now that they have the lead, I think that they uh, might be able to work opportunities to be able to draw Italy onto themselves and find a space in behind. Certainly the early signs are there. England have a free kick now. Jack Grealish has been brought down on the left-hand side of England's midfield. And I'm sure we'll stand over this. Not the, the say I'm sure he's trying to nick five yards with the positioning of this free kick, and he, he might just get away with it, actually. Um, there's no sense of urgency about England restarting play at the moment. But that's a byproduct of the start they've made with Declan Rice's goal on 13 minutes. The difference between the two sides. They play 22 now on Talksport. 1 0 England. Shaw driving it in. Kane hoping that the ball would get there. Toloy made sure that it didn't. Walker chases after the loose ball in the midfield and got there well ahead of Pellegrini. And Rotegi will try and charge down the ball that's laid by England back for Calvin Phillips. He can easily find Pickford. And Pickford waves everybody upfield. And then taps it out from the back to the right-hand side. Even English goals away to Italy have been uh, a real rarity in the past. Uh, only three in 
50 odd years Andros Townsend had scored the last of them for England haven't won away to Italy since 1961 when Jimmy Greaves scored a late winner in a 3-2 victory in Rome and they're showing a real confidence playing out from the back Pickford from a wide angle just chipped one down the touchline and then was uh, away from the six yard box but England were able just to uh, recycle position and, uh, possession and keep it Bellingham ultimately was closed down and couldn't lay it back for sure are England overplaying at the back? Um, they're certainly enticing the Italians onto them um, on occasion you do wonder when, when a loose pass goes, goes astray but it's something that they've done continually over an, a number of years and that's how Gareth wants them to play what it's doing is frustrating the crowd and the crowd are desperate for the Italians to squeeze on and be more aggressive with their press and uh, listen, if we can pick them off and get beyond their midfield all well and good now the ball was played as it went out of play for a throw into the England bench it is a, a, a sunken dugout one of the old fashioned dugouts here just by lane one of the running track I think it was Phil Foden that uh, showed a, a real reluctance to give the ball back and the fourth official came across and had a word with him Novak Simovic just laying down the law eventually Italy restarted play with a throw in which swiftly developed into an England goal kick Pickford will take that and strike it forward left footed long one straight down the middle for Harry Kane Kane receiving the ball turning away from a Cherby taking it out towards the right hand touch line Pellegrini slides in makes no contact with ball or man and Kane wins the throw down towards the corner flag yeah as I say there's been a couple of occasions already with the Cherby when people face him up uh, he does look a bit short of movement around those hips and uh, good opportunities to run at him England have already maintained their fantastic goal scoring record in qualifiers as the throw from Kane goes straight past Saka and out of play they've now scored in each of the last 26 qualifiers they've played and that's since a, a World Cup qualifier in Slovenia back in October 2016 ball will be knocked away from the back by Donnarumma high over halfway chested down at the top of the line by Wategi linking up the uh, play a little bit more effectively this time and Spinazzola coming in off the left flank and plays it into the uh, centre circle an opportunity to knock it square from Jorginho Jorginho to Toloi Toloi to Acerbi Italy uh, very patiently building from the back a little bit too patiently for the liking of some of the Italian supporters a few murmurs of discontent just doing the rounds Ball play for by Di Lorenzo, stepping up for the defensive line was Maguire. He was fouled, free kick to England, and let's get news of a Northern Ireland goal from Graham Courtney. Yes, Northern Ireland into the lead. Dion Charles from Bolton, side foot in the ball home. Really good work though by Connor Washington and Rotherham. Swung the ball in, and right place, right time. Charles has actually side footed it home. San Marino nil, Northern Ireland one. Elsewhere, Portugal lead Liechtenstein 1 0. That was Joao Cancelo that scored that. Denmark 1, Finland 0. Bosnia and Herzegovina leading Iceland 1 0. And the other game in this group tonight is Skopje between North Macedonia and Malta is still goalless with 25 minutes gone. England take that free kick for the foul on Maguire. It's pinged out to the left hand side for Grealish, who then very quickly wins the throw off Berardi. This is what I can't understand about uh, some of the standard of refereeing oh, I see. The referee there is give a foul on Maguire when the ball went straight to Stones. He had a perfect opportunity to play on and play advantage. He didn't take that opportunity, blew up for a free kick, and then he comes out and verbally cautions the central defenders for taking their time, not taking it. And you think to yourself, well, you were the one who stopped the game, mate. Here's Bellingham. So come off and gone out of play for a throw, which will be taken over on the Italian left. Taken back towards Jorginho, he finds a Verratti. They've worked that very cleverly between the pair of them. Jorginho bringing it forward again. Retegi oh, couldn't get a shot. What a tackle from Rice. That was a brilliant piece of play, sliding in on the edge of the penalty area. And just as he was uh, preparing to wrap his right foot around that and fire it towards goal Rice slides in an immaculately tight challenge I'll tell you what that was an absolute wonderful challenge there he's just opened up just about to pull the trigger 
and you've got to get that right. If you mistime that, you've got a free kick right on the edge of the box. Wonderful challenge by Dagan. England have it with Shaw. Going back for Pickford. And a 25th international clean sheet for Jordan Pickford tonight. And will mean that England have their first win away to Italy in more than 60 years. Harry Kane. The ball inside the centre circle. You with Talk Sport, Jim Bradford and Stuart Pearce talking you through the action in Naples, where Declan Rice's 13th minute goal has given England a 1 0 lead. Maguire plays it back for Stones. Now all the way back for Pickford again. Pickford taking a touch in the D and then just letting the ball grind to a halt for a moment. Stones plays it forward for Rice. Bellingham, who's uh, had an excellent start, wins a free kick. And uh, Verratti not happy with the decision. And uh, picks up the ball and chases the referee. Just uh, discusses it with him, but it will be an England free kick inside the centre circle. Here's Stuart Pearce. Yeah, ball played in there just to Bellingham, who's received the ball. And uh, as I, say, I wouldn't say he's just tempting a challenge, if you like, but uh, maybe slightly mistimed. And the referee now has decided to book Declan Rice for not taking a quick free kick. Yeah, failure to restart the play, and I think referee Jovanovic will claim that a warning had been given with the uh, the previous incident that Stewart had described. But England weren't taking a huge amount of time about it. Nevertheless, Rice finds himself in the book as well as on the score sheet. Yeah, and what you don't want is a concern from uh, a player getting sent off for, for two cautionable uh, offences on the pitch for a, a very loose one that Declan's just got done for. So now the free kick will be taken, and Maguire sends an aerial ball out of the England right-hand side, where Saka took a step back and tried to find Calvin Phillips with a cushioned layoff with the right step. Italy win it back, work it forward quickly. Pickford sprints out of his penalty area and gets it away from the on-rushing Berardi. And then England mop up very tidily with Carl Walker going back for Jordan Pickford again, and the opening half hour had a a good few nervy moments to start with but England have been in control since about the 7th, 8th minute something like that and a good value for the 1-0 lead that they've got provided by Declan Rice after Harry Kane's shot it was blocked in a, a melee inside the 6 yard box and Rice was on hand to slot the ball home for just his third international goal Luke Shaw has it in front of the England dugout which is on the uh, near side of the touchline Ball down towards Bellingham. Bellingham for Rice. And then Rice down towards Maguire and back for Jordan Pickford again. Dressed all in yellow tonight. Forward from him. England just stringing the passes together. And fighting the Italian press. And so far have shown an ability by Lash to be able to play through it. Saka gets it forward for Phillips. Down towards Carl Walker. Walker back for Saka again. Saka taking a touch, beating one, beating a second, and then just a little blind layoff to his right. And Harry Kane wasn't where he thought he was going to be. Kane then supplies the pressure on a Cherby who was unexpectedly given the ball. He wasn't anticipating that Saka would pass it straight to him in that area. England win a fight ball on halfway. A header which will go forward, and Kane will chase it. And he's forced Toloy to play it. Toloy getting the better of Kane. And he and Acherby will be able to play out from the back for Italy. Still 1 0 England with 14 minutes to go to half time on Talk Sport. Bellingham's won it back though for England. Opportunity now, Calvin Phillips! And that is so narrowly won. Tell you what, Harry Kane is not happy at all with Phillips. If you're going to shoot, you've got to work the goalie or hit the target. He's had two players, he's had Kane, a little slip pass, he's in on goal, should have been the better option. He's had Bellingham come in to support him and Saka in advanced areas, and he's missed the target. Good opportunity. And still yet to score a goal for his country, Calvin Phillips. I don't think it's, it was the wrong thing to shoot, but when you do that, if you've got the England captain and potential all-time uh, goal-scoring record to your side, you've got to at least make the goalie make a save. Marco Verratti, 10 yards inside his own half, just played forward over the halfway line, one back by Saka, and now Kane, and taking a touch, and uh, then 
And taking a knock in the midfield, Barana was in there very strongly on him. And Toloi will get it forward. Back from Berardi. And Toloi into his left-hand side. And Cherby plays the ball forward over the halfway line. And they haven't been able to get Rotegi into the game as yet, but this is better from Italy. Berardi getting it wide. Edwards Pellegrini across the... Didn't find a target. And Bakayo Saka's going to be able to bring it away. And Verratti has done well to get back goal side. Saka holding it up, holding it up, waiting for Carl Walker to make a run on the overlap for him. And he just tried to release him, but Italy have been able to win it back very comfortably. And Verratti and Jorginho between them in the midfield can calm things down. And then we'll be able to get Rafael Toloi into possession. The last five minutes or so, Italy have probably had a lion's share of the ball again. Not really been able to get into uh, good areas. And so far, from an England perspective, good news that they haven't been able to service Rotegi at all. No, England have looked very, very comfortable. Aside from maybe that first six minutes, as you outlined, where the Italians got on the front foot, tried to put some pressure on England, they've, they've quelled that, they've, they've been comfortable within it, and when there's been the odd option that the Italians might feature uh, in advanced areas, the likes of Rice has, has cleared things up, or... England players have had the, the presence of mind just to quell that. Connor Walker lays the ball back through the midfield again. Harry Maguire will be able to make his way onto it. With 12 minutes from half time. John Stones, 20 yards inside his own half. Alan Phillips had a bit of a nervy start, Stuart. What have you made of the way that he settled into this game over the last half hour or so yeah I, I think he's been okay he still looks like one of the players or probably the only player out there that's not been playing continually at a, a really fast level you know but he, he's done okay he's played his part within the uh, within the group with the Saka Kane waiting couldn't get himself into a shooting position but a lot of these Italian challenges are last ditch interventions around the edge of the penalty area England pick up easy possession again in a deeper area, but it was a really poor long diagonal ball forward, and Stones couldn't hide his dismay. Italy get it back with Di Lorenzo, the right back, and then Shaw with an intelligent header, picked up by Bellingham. Bellingham in a central position, 35 yards out, and tried to turn and bring the ball under complete control and couldn't do so. Ended up on the deck and might have had a good claim for a free kick, but nothing was given. And Italy will be able to work it forward through the midfield here with Jorginho. And he's been able to play between the lines. Spinazzola, the left back, making his way down the left-hand side of the area. Chopping in onto his right foot. Does curve it in, but very good defending from Maguire, who just stopped at Rotegi getting anything like a run towards the ball. And it beat the pair of them and goes out of play for a goal kick. And ten minutes from half-time, it's still Italy nil England. One on talk sport. Yeah, the game sort of changed on its head now. England comfortable in possession. Any chance that the Italians have got on turnover, they've done well. They, they've stopped that and, and put a couple of passes in and stopped any form of momentum. And uh, the Italians look as though all they've got at the moment is, is a counter-attack threat, potentially. But England looking very comfortable. And this is... If you're going to win major things, I think, you've got to have a team that can, can quell the opposition and keep it and play with arrogance. And I think, bar the first six minutes, England have played with a real arrogance on the football and they've looked really composed with what they're trying to achieve. Jack Grealish in possession. And he's played it back for Pickford. Or Pickford just looked for a moment as though he wanted half a second too long and Rotegi came across to put the pressure on, but he could dispense with the ball upfield. Albeit that he was easily mopped up by the Italians. Cherby to Toloi. And then forward again by uh, Di Lorenzo. In towards Rotegi. Heavy touch from him. Stone sliding in, won it back. And in doing so, possibly caught Barella. The referee allowing play to go on with Verratti in possession. And wide it goes to the left in Spinazzola. Pellegrini turning back. And plays it back towards uh, Toloi once more. This is an Italian side that finished top of their Nations League group. They will play Spain in the semi-finals. Three wins, two draws and the one defeat. They lost 5-2 to Germany. It's at four points from England, six from Hungary. Guys, 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 Three guys. points 
And three of the four points that they took from England came in a 1 0 win in the uh, San Siro. Six months ago tonight, actually, Raspadori, who's injured tonight, was scoring a second half winner in that game. A goal that he took particularly well. And finished 0 0 with a, a scratch Italian side, including a couple of uh, Serie B players who got a draw in the Black Country at Molyneux back in June. And we'll bring the ball forward here. They've played much better tonight than they have in either of those performances against Italy already, almost irrespective of what happens from here. I don't want to run before I can walk, Jim, but I just have a feeling a second England goal would really break the hearts of the Italians. I really do. I just get that impression they're tittering on the, on a, on the verge of sort of losing their confidence in anything that they might be trying to achieve if England do score. And it is... And it's worth pointing out an Italian side that have only lost five of their last 52 internationals. England good value for a 1-0 lead given to them some 25 minutes ago now by Declan Rice. And Rice has got the ball in the midfield. He's got Grealish and Luke Shaw to his left. Shaw will poke it forward with the outside of the left boot. And then uh, make a run. Bellingham playing it forward. Grealish goes to ground. The referee for play to go on when well, it looks as though Grealish might have been found now it's for the launch for Tegi wants to chop it onto his right for to get a shot in Stones blocked that and then Pickford doesn't have a save to make from the subsequent effort that comes in Spinazzola making his way forward says that he was found inside the penalty area and then the referee has England players coming up and asking the question why Freaky wasn't given Grealish's way about 15 seconds before that the play will restart with a goal kick to Pickford in England and the 1 0 lead is still intact. Yeah, I think it was played into Jack Grealish, and for me, he's encouraging the tackle, encouraging uh, and trying to play for a foul, and that's a dangerous thing to do unless you've got the referee on your side. What's most pleased you with England's performance so far, sir? Uh, the way they've got to grips with the first six minutes of the game and wrestled momentum back off the Italians. That's the biggest thing for me, Jim. I think we're playing with a team with supreme confidence here. And England will be in a position to bring it forward again. Works out towards the left-hand side of the box for Jack Grealish. Grealish for Shaw. Shaw with time to measure the cross and Kane was waiting, but it's headed over his own bar by one of the Italian defenders. And out of play for another England corner. Yeah, really stick play there. Whipped across. Grealish just set it back. And as a, a good left-back would do, just come on to it, Shaw. Just feathered it into the box with a bit of swing away from the goalkeeper and good defending eventually with Kane hovering at the back post. No any good left-backs? No. Well, yes, yeah, sure. I'm looking at one. He's a very good left back. Is the correct answer? Hasaka is going to take this corner. Five minutes from half time. England a goal up, looking for more. Saka raises both arms above his head. Much more air underneath this one. Kane peeling away at the back post, claiming there was a handball by Di Lorenzo. Nothing given, and he'll sprint towards the referee on the edge of the penalty area. He'll keep a respectful distance, but there were five England players all convinced as to what they saw there. But the referee at the moment is given a goal kick. If it's not a penalty, then you've got to ask the question: Why isn't it a corner? If Kane thinks he's headed it on to uh, an Italian defender. So we're just waiting to hear on this one. Well, there is a potential penalty check from the uh, Polish VAR, Thomas Kwiatkowski. And the referee has been told to wait. Now we're just getting a, a first look at a replay now. It's one of those that you would imagine wouldn't be given in the Premier League, but in European football, often is. And the referee is going to come across the review area and he's going to have a look. Well, I've got to say, if it's hit the Italian player's arm, his arm's away from his body and he's leaning back into Kane, that's a penalty. If it's hit his arm. And the only reason this referee's gone to have a look at it is because they've seen it hit his arm. That's a penalty. Well, Di Lorenzo is the uh, defender involved. They will have to make sure that he's not getting pulled by Kane under the flight of the ball. I don't think he is from the replay that we've been able to see. And he seems to hit Di Lorenzo's left arm. And you would imagine that a penalty will be given. And Harry Kane will have the chance, in a moment maybe, to become England's all-time leading international goal scorer. The referee's having a long, long look at it though. 
and he's come back makes his way back over the running track he will walk past the Italian dugout onto the field and has given a penalty to England a goal up through Declan Rice and they now have the chance to double the lead before half time yeah, correct decision by the referee. They're claiming that the Italian defender Di Lorenzo was being pulled by Kane. I didn't see that at all, and I don't think he could have any uh, qualms at all. Well, Donnarumma has just gone to uh, pick up the ball and has thrown it away from the penalty spot. Four Italian players are around the penalty spot now and are doing everything they can, basically to waste as much time just to give Harry Kane a few moments with his inner monologue to contemplate the enormity of the situation because he has of course been here before with the ball in his hand for the chance to score international goal number 54 but is this going to be his moment now Donnarumma Again, wasting as much time as he thinks he can get away with. Has left the field for a moment. He takes a swig of his drink. Harry Kane now spots the ball down. And the folly of Declan Rice getting booked for time wasting now is ridiculous with the amount of time Donovan is uh, utilising. So Harry Kane stands, addresses the ball, runs up, hits it right for it. History maker and record breaker. His place in the pantheon of England greats long assured, but he's now the most prolific of the lot. From Bloomer to Finney to Charlton and Greaves and back again to Rooney and Kane. England's number nine is now England's number one. 54 goals for England. And they lead 2-0 in Naples. Well, a, it's a fantastic second goal for England and puts them in a brilliant, brilliant position in this. But I must pay tribute to this fellow who's been an absolutely wonderful servant to England and still will be, hopefully for many years to come, to actually break the goal-scoring record of some of the greats that you've just mentioned there. And some of the greats certainly that have been in a team that I've played in the likes of Lineker and Shearer is quite incredible it really is wonderful achievement he's now scored in three successive internationals 54 goals in 81 games his record in qualifying matches unsurpassed 33 goals in 28 qualifying games for England it is a night where he will make positive headlines, a night where he's made that little bit of history, but it's a night that, from an England team perspective, could be better still. They lead 2-0, then the rolling forward again, in three minutes of stoppage time, Kane's got it again, belling and ready for the pullback, oh, a missed kick from Grealish, it should have been three, and somehow he has shanked it across the face of goal from six yards out. It's an enormous let off for Italy. Well, we talked about how slick we were against Spain in that uh, opening uh, time some time back. That was slickness personified. Fantastic team play. Cut straight through the Italians down the right hand side. And the pullback, Grealish, should have scored. Really, really just opened his body up and sort of cut cut across the ball and lost any accuracy doing so he can't believe he's missed it he just cannot believe it he stood almost motionless for about six or seven seconds looking at the goal then looking towards the ball and now as the ball goes out of play for a throw which is a foul throw by Luke Shaw he dropped the ball as he threw it onto the uh, field and it will be uh, taken as an Italian throw and Jack really still stands quite get his head round the stellar nature of that miss but the bottom line is if you're going to miss one like that do it when you're 2-0 up not when it's 0-0 nil or you're 1-0 nil down what a performance this has been from England a shaky first six minutes since then they have been fantastic Rice on 13 came with a record breaking goal on 44 from the penalty spot and after the nerves of 
That second penalty against France at Alcor, it must have made it even sweeter that his next penalty in an English shirt is dispatched as coolly, calmly and confidently as it was. A ball played by the Italians down the left-hand side of the box for Tegi actually wrapped his foot around as Pickford was trying to shepherd it out of play for a goal kick. And England had three covering defenders and no Italian player had gambled on Rotegi being able to keep that in. And when he poked it back into the middle, England can mop up easily. It's Italy nil, England two. And what a start this has been to the European Championship qualification campaign. Yeah, it certainly is, Jim. It's important now we just see this half out confidently. Time and time again you see put teams 2-0 up and that goal before half-time can cause a big problem for the second half. But... England are playing with a supreme confidence now, an arrogance if you like, a good arrogance at that. The half-time whistle goes, the Italians smack the ball away in frustration, the Azzurri booed and whistled off the field. England quite magnificent after that shaky start. Harry Kane setting up the first for Declan Rice, scoring the second, his 54th goal for his country, a record no England man has ever gone to it's a record that might stay for many many years Naples the venue for the moment that the record was broken Naples also the venue for a magnificent 40 minutes of England football that speaks so well of battles ahead half time Italy nil England two and the England fans in fine voice as we reach half time live here in Naples on talk sport but what can you say about Harry Kane he scored 79 seconds into his England debut came on as a sub for Wayne Rooney ironically enough heading in at the far post against Lithuania and here we are all these years on eight years on and it is King Kane absolute goal machine 54 goals England's all-time leading scorer and Stuart Pearce he's only 29 there's even more to come from Harry Kane yeah and rightly so I think he leads by example his professionalism everything that the boy stands for is absolutely fantastic to actually score those amount of goals when you're talking about what's gone before you over decades Cholton and Lineker and people of that ilk is quite an incredible achievement it really is scoring goals seemingly every time he takes to the pitch for England and it was England's second tonight and they thoroughly deserve a two goal lead they've been really good England haven't they I'd have been outstanding They've had to quell a first six minutes or so when the Italians got on the front foot and, as you would expect, at home and whatever. But England, what they've done well, they've wrestled momentum back from the Italians. And it's not often you see when an, when an England team are winning that they control the game. And they've done exactly that today, Abe. It's hard to pick out one individual who's, who's played better than anybody else. I think Bellingham has looked... Uh, superb commanding certainly in the first half of the first half if you understand what I mean the, the, the first goal from uh, Declan Rice it, it reminded me of you last night saying you know there's more to come he, he's got more to give England and, and amongst uh, what he can give England is goals he should be up in his goal tally and he's got another one tonight yeah he certainly has as I say <laughs> listen he, he, he suffered a bit of criticism I spoke uh, on the subject with yourself yesterday you know I think he can had goals to and assists uh, and a lot more to his game because he's got that in his locker no doubt and that goal there will give him great confidence it really will and as I say keep ticking the goals away with his performance he's done two things in this game he scored at one end and he's made a tackle on the edge of the box aid which was absolutely probably worth more than the actual goal believe it or not and some who uh, aren't sure about Declan Rice you know in terms of uh, is he really top level because he's being talked about with a move to a big big club in the summer I think tonight yes he's got the booking which was really harsh but a brilliant tackle he's got he's slammed in in the first goal for uh, England you can see a top level player here tonight can't you? oh there's no doubt about that the way he covers the ground the way if there's a goal threat in any way shape or form he puts the afterburners on and just gets there and nicks it away from the opposition. All of those type of things are the qualities of a top quality player. Uh, it would have been, uh, there's been some good football from England and yes, the first goal was a bit scrappy. The second one is a, is a penalty. If Jack Grealish hammers in that chance in injury time after some brilliant football, then we would all be purring about the England that England third goal. 
and how good the football has been and they got the goal from it that they deserved I mean he should have made sure with that finish shouldn't he he should have scored there's no doubt about that he's ended up leaning back and cutting across the ball trying to keep it down I understand the technique that he's tried to use but by doing so he just cut across the ball if you like and, and put it across the face of the goal but you've got to admire the build-up play from Kane and various other players in the build-up. It was so slick, so quick, so economical as well. It was incredible. It's been some great football from uh, England. Here, live on TalkSport, they are in control. It's Italy nil, England to Northern Ireland going going well as well in their qualifier, Graham Courtney. Yes, they are. San Marino nil, Northern Ireland one. Bit frustrating, really, for Northern Ireland. San Marino, well, they're sitting back, loads of plays behind the ball. It's what you'd expect, really. Paddy McNair of the Borough had the best early chance. That was in the third minute. Managed to actually fire ahead straight at the San Marino goalkeeper. But 23 on the clock, deadlock broken. Bolton's Dion Charles from fairly close range after some great work by uh, Connor Washington of Rotherham. He's managed to get a really good cross in, and there was Dion Charles to side foot at home. And just one other chance just before the break, Millwall's George Sam just managing to slice a ball over the bar but it's been pretty good to watch so far half time in Northern Italy San Marino nil, Northern Ireland 1 let's give the uh, half times elsewhere Bosnia and Herzegovina 2 Iceland nil, Portugal 1 Liechtenstein nil. Jao Cancelo with the only goal there and that's Ronaldo's 197th cap breaking the record in men's international football most capped men's player in international football also in group J Slovakia nil, Luxembourg nil. in England's group the two appear in Italy uh, North Macedonia nil, Malta nil at uh, half time is uh, rather surprising in a group H uh, Slovenia won 2 one away to Kazakhstan earlier it's Denmark 1 Finland nil at half time and San Marino nil. Northern Ireland 1 this is TalkSport your live football station your England station I'll be on the breakfast show with Ali McCoyst and Ray Parler tomorrow morning on TalkSport Sports Bar tonight with Jamie O'Hara and Jason Cundy taking your England calls at 10 and we'll have all the reaction from the England camp here in Naples after full time with Talk Sports England correspondent Faker others and it should be a happy camp if they can continue what they've been doing in the first half because at half time live on Talk Sport in Naples it's Italy nil England 2 whether you're searching for kettlebells or boxing gloves wherever your passion takes you Visa Secure Technology keeps your payments safe. Visa, how you pay matters. Milk, freshly ground Arabica beans. And you know what it tastes like? Coffee. Great tasting coffee. Simple. From the case files of Miss Maureen 118212. You know, the life of a telephone detective is never dull. One minute you might be called by a lady from Luton looking for a lighting shop. The next it might be a gent from Jarrow who just needs a jeweller. Whatever the number you need, the number you need is Maureen 118212. Maureen 118212. Calls cost 250 per call plus 75p a minute with a minimum one minute charge plus your phone company's access charge. As a bolt driver, I work hard. I work long hours, getting people where they need to be, from A to B. So, at the end of the day, I expect a fair deal from my employer. I deserve better. Bolt drivers, following the successful Uber claim, be part of the fight for the compensation and workers' rights you deserve. Join Lee Day's Bolt Drivers Claim today. Visit leeday.co.uk slash bolt claim or text claim to 82727. When a stroke strikes, the damage spreads like a fire in the brain. You have to think and act fast. Face, has it fallen on one side? Arms, can they be raised? Speech, is it slurred? Time, it's time to call 999 if you see any single one of these signs. The faster you act, the better their chances. When a stroke strikes, Act fast. Call 999. If you've spent money on tools, clothing, travel or food for work, you could be due 3K on average back from the tax man. Search Rift Tax Refunds today. Get that Rift refund feeling. The Sun Super Days is off to Alton Towers Resort and your two tickets are free. Jump aboard over 40 hair-raising attractions like Oblivion, Wicker Man and new for 2023, The Curse at Alton Manor. Pick up the sun today and collect your codes for two free tickets to Walton Towers Resort worth over £130. Decency supply. Ah, life. One minute you're calmly getting on with your day. The next... 
We never really know what's around the corner, do we? That's where More Than Insurance comes in. When things don't go to plan, we can help you get back on track. For pet, home or car insurance, go to morethan.com because life is more than insurance. A million pounds. <laughs> is, this, is this a wind-up? It has to be a wind-up. Half the first, my children, this is the best phone call I've ever received in my life. This is what it sounds like when people win big with the National Lottery. Will you be next? The National Lottery. Your numbers make amazing happen. Rules and procedures apply. Players must be 18 or over. Kick off on Talk Sport with Ladbrokes. Are you in? Let's go. Play at ladbrokes.com. 18 plus be gamble aware. Euro 2024 qualifier live. What a finish! On Talk Sport. The road to Berlin starts here, and every step of the journey will be live on Talk Sport. And England have got two against one on the right hand side. Bellingham's going to be able to bring it forward and far into one's goal, and Donnarumma tips it over the bar. Another left footed in swinging delivery, it falls for Kane, it's blocked, and then lashed in. England lead, and it broke back down on the edge of the box. Declan Rice was in there. Yeah, England playing like a team that are comfortable with each other, playing like a, almost a club side at the moment. You can see the confidence and know how. With his inner monologue to contemplate the enormity of the situation because he has, of course, been here before with the ball in his hand for the chance to score international goal number 54. So Harry Kane stands, addresses the ball, runs up, hits it, right foot it! Harry Kane, history maker! Well, in the land of pizza and pasta, it's Rice with the first goal and record-breaking Harry Kane with the second. England two up in the first qualifier for Euro 2024 in Germany next year. Let's get the half-time odds with Ladbrokes. Odds update on Talk Sports with Ladbrokes. Are you in? Let's go. Play at ladbrokes.com. 18 plus be gambleaware.org. Alex Apati from Ladbrokes. This is looking good, isn't it? England two up here in Naples. That's the best line of the night, by the way, in, in, in the land of pizza and pasta and rice. Oh, what a dream. And and you couldn't have predicted that either, because Declan Rice was so unlikely to score. So fair play to you, mate. I'm, I almost want to dedicate this whole bit to just for everyone to sit and enjoy that. Uh, I appreciate it. Really, you couldn't really ask for, for much more as far as the odds are concerned. England are 1-20 to 20 now. Italy... Uh, I think a 50 to 1 to win, and the draw is 12 to 1. Good ask for England. Declan Rice, obviously, as we say, not exactly known for his goal scoring prowess. I, I can pretty confidently chalk that down as a win for the Bookies, I think. Uh, Grealish's Saka and Kane's would have been all well back to score first, and all eyes will be on Harry Kane now, and, and, and rightly so. Record England goal scorer, how fitting for it to come uh, it's from the penalty spot as well after that miss in Qatar, but we won't say any more about that. Odd favour do for uh, England do favour England to score next at 7-5 to five, but Italy is still only even money to score a goal for both teams to score tonight is even money given that they're a home team I wouldn't be surprised to see them score at least one but England are 3-4 to four for a clean sheet uh, as I said though tonight's all about Harry Kane he's still got a few goals in him yet hasn't he which means uh, that new record will take some beating in, in years to come if you fancy him to get another tonight 11-2 to two, say if he does uh, assuming he stays on the pitch you probably wouldn't back against that now would you you wouldn't Alex appreciate all your kind words thank you very much those were the latest odds with Labrooks play at labrooks.com 18 plus be gamble aware dot org odds update on talk sports with Labrooks are you in let's go play at labrooks.com 18 plus be gamble aware dot org well, this is the first of the Euro qualifiers for England and for Italy as well. There's another one coming up this weekend. Saturday, uh, Faker, others, our England correspondent, will be at Spurs training ground. All the England interviews on TalkSport. And then Sunday, the game itself. From 4pm, we've got build-up for a 5 o'clock kickoff at Wembley as England take on Ukraine. It will be an emotional occasion for sure. Um, all the qualifiers will be on TalkSport, of course. We're going to be in Malta and North Macedonia later this year with England on Talk Sport. Uh, and the Premier League is back April the 1st. Man City against Liverpool is live and exclusive and only on Talk Sport. 11am 
for game day with Reshmin Chowdhury uh, and you'll get your live commentary of Manchester City against Liverpool. Uh, that's all the football to come on Talk Sport. Very interesting uh, point made by Stuart Pearce in first half commentary uh, with regard to England playing like a club side. You get that feel from this England side watching them, but you can only manufacture that, generate that, make that happen with the right kind of management. So when players are included in the, in the team or in the squad, like Alvin Phillips, sometimes that loyalty is repaid by the players because of that club feel that you can see coming through on the pitch. See, some people use loyalty from the manager as a weapon to beat the manager with, and I've heard that, he's too loyal, he's this, he's that. But the only way you get performances like this that we're seeing at the moment, and continually, I I think over the last six years or so, under his uh, tutorship, is the fact that he's got confidence in the players, he backs loyalty, but he also makes judgment calls that are the right ones the vast majority of the time. And we've got a team here that are playing like a club side. They're not playing like a team that meet every once a month. Last time this team played together, eight was when? November? Yeah, World Cup, well, December World Cup, yeah. <laughs> so it takes some doing because they're all used to each other. And that, hopefully, is going to be a mark of a side that's going to go a little bit further than we have done in recent tournaments come come sort of next summer. You say it takes some doing. You've been a manager, you've been a player as well, you, and you've been to World Cups, etc. So how difficult is it to make that happen? Well, I, I think what we've, what we've got is a, is a team that are used to playing with each other. A lot of these players have long, played alongside each other quite a bit. This is a really consistent side, and I think he, he's developed that over time over a number of games over a lot of matches and a number of years and as I say they've experienced each other and they enjoy each other's company you can see that from the outside I mean Faye goes inside the uh, inside the camp on a regular basis and she's always feeding back the enjoyment that the players enjoy each other's company and that's great to see there's a real camaraderie and that shows through on the pitch so far so good but there's another 45 to go and Italy will have had a team talk and they will be fired up they're back out on the pitch England joining them there the match officials are out there as well it's been a great start to England's qualifying campaign the top two in the group go automatically to the Euros this is the toughest game England face on paper and they've bossed it so far Italy nil England 2, second half, live on TalkSport with the former England captain, Stuart Pearce, and your commentator, Jim Proudfoot. And it will be England that will get us back underway, kicking from left to right in this second half. No changes being made by either manager at half-time. Uh, so England, Pickford in goal, Walker Stones, Maguire and Shaw, Rice and Phillips, Saka, Bellingham and Grealish, and their record-breaking goal scorer Harry Kane up front. Italy, Donnarumma in goal, Di Lorenzo, Toloi, Acerbi and Spinazzola, Barella, Jorginho, Verratti, Berardi, Rategi, Pellegrini. And we are back underway. England leading by two goals to nil. In the first half in which they had four shots on target without reply, they had 60% of the possession. They were dominant after that nervy start. They were completely dominant from about the fifth, sixth minute onwards. Italy have a throw, which is taken into the feet of Jorginho. He will chase the return ball, but Declan Rice can prod it away. Behind Shaw, and it goes out of play for a throw that Di Lorenzo will come across to take quickly for the Italians. Thrown into the feet of Jorginho again, and this time he's given it away. And it'll be a free kick which will be taken over on a uh, throw, which will be taken. Over on the far touch line by England. A minute gone in the second half. You would talk sport. Live in Naples. Italy nil. England two. One of those perfect nights so far, Stuart Pearce. Yeah, it certainly has been. And uh, I think it's in England's hands to make sure it stays that way. Uh, I think it would be a crime if, if they take the foot off the gas in any way, shape or form. Or even think that this game is finished. Because I can assure you, a goal in the opposite direction and things will change very very quickly in this stadium and the Italians have the first corner in the second half they only had one in the first period and the first one of the second half has come almost straight away and it's going to be taken on the right hand side Pellegrini stands inside the six yard box Di Lorenzo on the edge of the six Rotegi is Going to be making his run in from deep in towards the near post. And he's the target. It's come over Pickford. But Maguire got a shot to leave it. Just took a flick on its way through. And out of play for another Italian corner. Almost bypassed everybody, but just brushed off an England player on the way through. 
I think in time gone by, I think uh, England have marked more zonally. It's certainly man-to-man on this occasion. Pellegrini taking this one, and Kane making a darting run across the near post was in there to make sure that uh, he got the touch to steer it away and might well have done so uh, with an area just slightly below his stomach and above his upper legs. Uh, He has, under some duress, crawled back onto the field so that he can receive any treatment on the field. I mean, this is, I mean, this is one of the players that I'm supporting tonight, and Harry Kane's done a brilliant job defensively there, but the referee's got to turn around. If a player crawls back on the pitch, let the game carry on, even if he's on the floor. In comes the corner again, the third in quick succession. This one punched away emphatically by Jordan Pickford. And Marco Verratti will bring it down, he's lost it. And England might be able to launch a counter-attack. Sliding challenge came in on Saka, took his legs away from him. And it's a free kick, it should be a yellow card to uh, go along with it. Uh, England, as uh, Saka tried to play it forward towards Grealish, uh, didn't get any advantage at all, and it was uh, an agricultural long-distance lunge. And actually, it has uh, only been punished by the free kick and not by a yellow card. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. Should have been a yellow card. Uh, I don't think there was any doubt in our mind that that attack was going to be stopped by Hook or by Crook. And we'll take the free kick, spin out of the right-hand touchline behind Saka, who sprinted down the touchline to try and uh, stop the ball going out of play for a throw. And the Italians want to restart play with a throw, and Saka kick the ball back onto the pitch to stop that happening. There is a little bit of devilment about this England side as if uh, they've been told that a little bit of housery now and then is good and that should be a longer suit than uh, that it has been in the past. It seems we remember on England side didn't pick up a, a caution in the World Cup at all until the quarter-finals. Now the ball has gone out of play for a, a throw that Luke Shaw was claiming was his without any degree of conviction at all and he did a massive double take when the referee actually agreed with it. I'm not sure the referee knew which way that was. Sure fooled him. He's taken the throw into the feet of Calvin Phillips and then turned forward by Harry Kane. He tried to twist and uh, get the ball away. It's 54 international goals, incidentally. All but six of those have come in competitive internationals. 48 in 68 competitive international goals. It's... Uh, just a, a remarkable run 18 of them from the penalty spot as well which is more than any other England player in history which might not be a yellow card for time wasting for the uh, Di Lorenzo uh, delaying the restart and taking the throw uh, hadn't got any immediate options but it took a good 10-15 seconds or so a ball out of play for a throw I'm only asking the question because that was why England picked up the yellow card Declan Rice picked one up in the first half for exactly that the ball ricocheting around the edge of the England penalty area here falls for Verratti urged to shoot goes for Pellegrini who fires it in and uh, got it past Walker but it went past the near post as well and out of play for a goal kick you win talk sport we play 51 in Naples it's Italy nil England 2 yeah, England not just pick the mantle up this second half which is a little bit understandable at times sometimes the breaks probably doesn't do you good uh, from being a 2 0 up, and they've just sat back a little bit, just need to get back into a rhythm that they had in the first half. It is an England side whose record in qualifying games has been magnificent in the recent past. They've only lost one of their last 56 qualifiers for either the World Cup or the European Championships, and that was a way to the Czech Republic back in October 2019. They take on Ukraine next. And it is live on TalkSport, all of England's games over the foreseeable future will be live on TalkSport, England against Ukraine, build-up starts at four, live from Wembley on Sunday, Adrian in the chair, and uh, join myself and Stuart and our England correspondent Faye Carruthers for the game from five this Sunday. It's coming together between two players in the midfield, which has uh, resulted in... Uh, a clash of heads and the referee has given a free kick Italy's way about 15 yards inside the England half 
A yellow card has been given. Is that shown to Di Lorenzo, who uh, seems to be walking away, maybe for something he said, and his part in the, uh, the skirmish in the midfield as well. And Harry Maguire is down hurt. It's, uh, our view of him obstructed. Boot was raised. And one of the uh, Italian players ducking their head in to try and flick the ball away uh, with his head. One of the England boots was raised. And that was uh, what caused the coming together. And Maguire is back on his feet and he's going to be able to continue. Yeah, your heart's in your mouth there slightly with uh, Declan Rice being booked in the first half for potential time wasting. Free kick taken by Italy, Verratti. Jorginho, Verratti playing it back out of the far touch line, the Italian right, and then getting a return ball. Now chipping it forward, Pickford comes out and was justified in doing that. Raced off his line and caught the ball about 10 yards inside his penalty area. Good, calm, safe goalkeeping. And the waits for players to push upfield. Threatens the ball, the ball to his right for Stones. Then as Rotegi just moved his body that way to try and cut it out, he went the other way towards Maguire. And then England venture upfield and win a throw. Mm, the Italians questioning every single decision now, trying to get something to go their way. England have just not come out with the same sharpness in the second half. It's often the case you see it and you, you sit back subconsciously. And, probably the best means of defence for England would potentially be attack we try to launch one here the long diagonal out towards this near touch on the England right for Bakayo Saka and just didn't quite get the angle right on the pass and uh, Spinazzola and Pellegrini between them could knock the ball out of play off England's Carl Walker and it'll be a throw which the Italians will take it's been another goal in the uh, opening 10 minutes or so of the Second half of that San Marino Northern Ireland game. His talk sports Grant Courtney. It's going to plan, Jim. San Marino nil, Northern Ireland two, and it's a second goal of the evening for Dion Charles. Lovely ball in from the left hand side. I'm afraid San Marino undone by pace. Dion Charles cracking dive in header. His second, our second, Northern Ireland second. San Marino nil, Northern Ireland two. Now elsewhere, Finland have equalised in Denmark. It's 1 1 there. Bosnia lead Iceland 2 0. Portugal 3, Liechtenstein nil. Cristiano Ronaldo has. Uh, just added a third there from the penalty spot on the night that he becomes the most capped men's international of all time. His 197th appearance for Portugal. And he's followed it up with goal number 119. Bailey Liechtenstein 3 0. Bernardo Silva also on the score sheet there. 0 uh, 0 Slovakia, Luxembourg. And the other game in this group also goalless in Scotia between North Macedonia and Malta. Phillips on the stretch there for England who lead here in Naples 2-0 here's Rotegi from distance and good luck from there 40 yards out and he's put it on lane 7 of the running track behind Jordan Pickford's goal yeah optimistic but I've got to say he's been dealing with scraps really running the line on his own up, up top Maguire and Stones have been more than comfortable in possession making him work for his call now without wishing to tempt fate England still looking pretty comfortable. Italy bring it forward. Here's an opportunity, and there's one back. And the deficit has been hard. Ten minutes into the second half. Marco Verratti, the architect. Matteo Rotegi, the Argentinian-born striker. The man in the right place at the right time to slot it home. Now you wonder how important that Jack Grealish miss might turn out to be. But Italy are on the ball, it's Italy 1, England 2, and a brighter start of the second half has been rewarded. Well, we've not come out since half-time, and uh, we've sat back a little bit and encouraged the Italians onto us a little bit, and I've got to say, a great cutback and a great finish. And uh, Maguire booked for his, uh, his challenge in the build-up to the goal as well. Where did it go wrong for England there? I, ju I think it, the half-time break certainly killed any momentum that we had. We've come out afterwards thinking our work's done at 2-0. And at international level, you're playing against Italy away uh, in Napoli. And you know full well 
I'm listening to the odds that they're talking about. You know, Italy are 50 to 1 or 12 to 1 for the draw. Ludicrous odds at half time. You know, this is Italy, by the way. Some confirmation of uh, that yellow card for Harry Maguire, Carl Walker, and Declan Rice also on yellow cards. Uh, Rice in the first half for uh, time wasting and Walker for raising his boot. Uh, towards a, a ducking Italian head about three, four minutes ago. Uh, Rotegi, if you can get the ball to in the right kind of area, he can be deadly. And his goal scoring record over the, the last 14, 15 months in Argentinian football has been exceptional. He's the leading scorer this season, he's the leading scorer last season, and he's just scored within an hour of his international debut to make it Italy 1, England 2. I've got to say, that cutback, was it from uh, Pellegrini that cut it back, was absolutely magnificent. Drew three uh, English uh, defenders to him and just cut it back to Rotegi, who slotted it in really comfortably. And Italy are going to be making a double change in a moment, chasing the game. The first 45 minutes, well, 40 of the first 45 minutes for England, one of the best performances they produced under Gareth Southgate and now they have to make sure that they can drive the advantage home they lead 2-1 and right when Harry Kane has scored his 54th goal for his country and Gareth Southgate hopes to become only the third England manager to win 50 games as the England boss it's not there yet and Rotegi's goal has livened the crowd to say the least and Italy are going to be bringing Cristante and Politano on in a moment. The Kyosak has got the ball for England. Will they heed this wake-up call? Walker playing it back for Pickford. He will control it just outside the penalty area. Lays it to his left-hand side for Maguire. Maguire to Stones. And England just playing the ball about at the back. Try to draw the press. Now Pickford works it forward. Upfield very quickly, look at the cane, and Cherby did well to win that, and then it was threaded through by Pellegrini. I think Rotegi sensed he was offside, made no attempt to go for the ball, and it flashed past him, and straight through for Pickford. Well, certainly that goals give uh, the Italian crowd a lift, they're getting behind their team now, and the team playing with more verve. Verratti, trying to drive them on, man with 400 PSG games behind him in England, knocking away with Walker finding Kane, Saka makes a run ahead of him, Saka just trying to get around the back of Spinazzola and did his best to instigate contact between the pair of them, he went to ground and the referee Jovanovic I think saw that one for what it was and allowed play to go on, I think that was the correct decision Donnarumma and like Jordan Pickford is winning his 51st count for his country tonight now Cherby to Toloi Rafael Saloy, the Brazilian-born centre-half, man who's featured extensively in Atalanta's good run over the last few years. And they'll bring it onto his right foot to get it forward. Harry Maguire in there very strongly, dealt with Rotegi well, but he's back on his feet, and Italy is still in possession in England territory. England leading 2-1 here on TalkSport. Pellegrini just working it forward. Berardi giving the ball straight back to him. It's been a real slow burner of a night as far as the Italians are concerned, but they're on the front foot again here. And England, much more in a game in this second half. Verratti, urged to shoot, gets it onto his left foot. Now it does drive it in. And it was a really good block from John Stones. He's got the wind out of his sails in the process. And then as England try and bring it away, another poor challenge comes in from the Italian midfield, and Jorginho will get a yellow card. Yeah, what England done very well in the first half and was probably their key card was wrestling momentum away early on from the Italians and they need to do exactly that once again. They've got the ball and turning momentum over is fine but you've got to keep going forward when you do that and put the Italians on the back foot and wrestle them back into their own half slightly. So Berardi and Barella off. Cristante and Politano come on to replace them Politano right winger plays his club football here for Napoli a man who's yet to score a competitive goal so he's on and he'll play on the right wing Brian Cristante one behind him a player set off in the Rome derby last weekend for Roma 
And he will play on the right of the midfield three. England leading 2-1 with 16 minutes gone in the second half on Talk Sport. And don't forget, coming up after us tonight, Jamie O'Hara and Jason Cundy taking your England calls. What have you made of what you've heard tonight? England's fantastic first half performance. Will they be able to see it through? You can put your call now. 03717 Pay tribute as well to Harry Kane. And we will hear from Gareth Southgate and the headline makers with Talk Sports England correspondent Faker others during the opening half hour 40 minutes of Sports Bar tonight. So all of the reaction, along with your reaction, on National Radio on Talk Sport from 10 o'clock this evening. Italy 1, England 2, the score. And England will bring the ball forward now with Grealish who's just stumbled there, lost his footing. And another player that at times tonight has done everything he can to try and instigate contact between himself and an opponent England are going to be able to bring it forward once more now with Bakayo Saka I'm just wondering whether the game continues in this theme where the changes might be for England I, I wonder whether he'll reach for Henderson to give that bit of game understanding maybe for Phillips um, with his lack of match uh, practice potentially and then is it one for Foden for Grealish as well? Yeah, realistically, you can't expect Calvin Phillips to get 90 minutes. He's only had one 90 minutes all season, which was uh, the, the couple in the Bristol City. It's the only time that he's played 90 minutes all season. So you, you can't expect that he will last the course here, particularly if England increasingly find themselves on the back foot. Politano with a first opportunity to try and shine on the Italian right-hand side. There is a buzz of expectation every time he picks up the ball. Goes back for Toloi. Toloi to Acerbi. 19 gone, second half. 2-1 to England on Talk Sport. Jim Bradford and Stuart Pearce, the former England captain, talking you through the action. Next up, England-Ukraine. Sunday kicks off at five, build up from four. Verratti. Little layoff. Rotegi. Good return ball. Just over here for Pellegrini. And that allowed Rice the opportunity to come back and clear. Poor clearance in turn though from Pickford. Straight for Verratti, 25 yards out. They'll come again with Jorginho. Verratti had to slide to try and get it under control. England will bring it away. Kane, not fouled by Toloy, who was on the scene really quickly putting the pressure on from behind him. And players allowed to continue. And it comes back for Jorginho again. Threaded through towards Rotegi. England clear it with Maguire. And towards the right, Politano with the cross. Rotegi trying to feather that one down towards the edge of the penalty area. Now Spinazzola will take over. The left back just given a shove by Carl Walker. Walker will follow him out towards the touchline. Spinazzola's retained possession. Another double change for Italy. We'll see Tonali. And I think Willie Monto come on in a moment. 20 minutes gone, second half. Mateghi's hard the deficit. And Italy in more control now than at any previous stage of the game. And I'll be very surprised if there's not a change very shortly. I think it'll probably be Foden Grealish. And whether he'll go Henderson for uh, Phillips, I'm not sure. I'm seeing Foden there now, Jim. So Foden wearing 20, as uh, has often been the case for England off the bench or in tournaments, and uh, he'll be on in the next break in play. Italy with uh, Acerbi to Toloi to Jorginho, back for Toloi. Acerbi down towards Brian Cristante. And Cristante, a tall, elegant ball playing midfielder works it back out towards the uh, Italian right-hand side. England at the moment can't get out of their own half. Italy 1, England 2 remains the score. England doing well to win possession back. Kane dropping deep and uh, putting in the hard yards again. Now finding Bakayo Saka. Saka inside the penalty area. Plenty of traffic between him and the middle of the box. Twisting, turning. Oh, he's done really well to dig the ball in, but he couldn't find Jude Bellingham. And it'll be cleared relatively comfortably down the Italian right-hand side. One attempt to uh, stop Tonali didn't come off. And Tonali has got Italy about 30, 40 yards further upfield. Layoff for Verratti. 
always shows a reluctance to shoot from distance in that kind of area. He's uh, hardly scored a, a goal in his senior career, really, in the grand scheme of things. He has it again. Jorginho playing it back to Verratti. Verratti on the half turn, setting up a Sherby. 34-year-old set a half down for the full-back Spinazzola. Opportunity for him to try and run at the Kaiosaka. Gets to the byline. Teases it inside the box. It bounces on the left-hand edge of the six, having gone over Jordan Pickford's head. And then England forced to concede a corner. Uh, under duress, Jack Grealish claiming that he was pushed. But the referee said no foul. And it's a corner to Italy. Yeah, once again, Jack Grealish looking for a foul rather than playing the ball. And... Uh... Just took his mind off what he's attempting to do with the ball and passing to a teammate. So another set piece. Hanseloy's made his way forward for this. Maguire heads it away. And headed further outside the penalty area. The referee spotted a, a push on Bellingham. And it's going to be a free kick. And now changes will be made. First of all, for England and that is Foden for Grealish. Yeah, as a thought, I, I, I don't know whether Gareth will see uh, Grealish being a little bit loose on that left-hand side. He'll want Foden offering a little bit more energy, new legs as well. I, I'm surprised that probably Phillips, even at this stage, Jim, like you, you rightly say, he's not had much uh, action time that, that he's still on. I think Henderson will be the reach-to man at some given stage. Well, Pellegrini has scored in his last two home games for Italy. He's not scored tonight. He's off. And Pellegrini and Jorginho, the two Italian players, withdrawn. Sandra Tonali, who made his international debut as a teenager, a 25 million euro signing for Milan from Brescia. He's on. And also coming on, Leeds United's Wilfred Nonto, a man who's more than happy to say that as he was growing up, he was completely inspired by Raheem Sterling. And that, that did so much for his formative years as a footballer, using Sterling as the inspiration. Zuri's youngest ever goal scorer, a man who's netted four for Leeds in an excellent first season in West Yorkshire after his move from Zurich. And Nonto comes on for his ninth cap for his country. England midway inside the Italian half just for a moment with a Carl Walker throw. Jude Bellingham was fantastic in the first 45 minutes but uh, he too has lost his way a little just in terms of the fact that England can't get the ball to him and as a, a result of that he's uh, been a waning influence in the second half. Yeah it is, so mostly England players probably not hit the heights that they did in the first half without a doubt so it's really important that well, we, we quell this sort of oncoming blue tide. And Monto starting this move, now has the opportunity to get the ball back. It's played inside the penalty area, but cleared. He just fell behind Tonali. And a header from Spinazzola goes out of play for a throw that England will take. England 20 minutes from a fantastic start of this group. 2-1 they lead. You feel this next 20 minutes could be so informative about what lies ahead for England over the uh, the next year, 14 months or so. And Walker gets a yellow card. Now, I thought he'd already been booked for the high boot early in the second half. But he's picked up a yellow card. He didn't show a reaction there that suggested that he was expecting that to be a second yellow card. And certainly the officials, none of the Italian delegation have and said that, so the yellow card that was shown in Walker's direction can't have been shown to Walker, but he's got one now, and again it was for time-wasting, delaying the throw, but the referee, if he's going to go down that line, has to be consistent, and he hasn't been at all consistent tonight. No, not, not in the time-wasting scenarios, it's ridiculous. You almost need to put a shot clock on here, because some of the, the bookings probably get done for, for less time than actual uh, other scenarios within the game but I think it's important now that England sort of quell this they've put a lot of hard work into uh, this evening and it to come away from here even with a point at this stage Jim would, would seem uh, as though we've missed something on that first half scoreline and those two missed chances early on well in the first half look a, a long time away now and how crucial will they be from Grealish and uh, Phillips having his shot pulled wide 
You know, the Brugge one in particular, which would have made it 3-0 just a couple of minutes into first half stoppage time. Miss Saka in possession for England on the right hand side, finding Kyle Walker. Walker working it back to John Stones. And Stones will play it down the line for uh, Calvin Phillips. Saka coming infield. Kane coming to meet it and has won the free kick. It's quite cute there, Harry Kane. He just knew he was going to be able to get between Tonali and the ball. The contact was inevitable. Kane goes down holding his right knee. It's a free kick which will be taken by England on the right-hand touchline. 18 minutes to go, Italy 1, England 2. Yeah. As you say, I don't know, sort of uh, substitute-wise, I'm quite surprised that there's not been more action from, from the England bench at this moment. What action should there be? Well, for me, Henderson is probably that little bit of know-how. Phillips has just been a, a little bit loose with a couple of his passes as of recent times. And I mean, from a midfield perspective, probably Henderson's got as much know-how as anybody. The ball is over on the Italian right-hand side with Toloi. And now Verratti's going to have the opportunity to bring it forward. Kane just backing off. It's easy possession for Italy at the moment, who will... Come 10 and 15 yards into England territory. Our next live Premier League game on Talk Sport, a week on Saturday, is a belter. Manchester City against Liverpool, the next Premier League game, and you will hear it on Talk Sport. Uh, game day live starts a week on Saturday, 11 o'clock, 12.30 kickoff for Manchester City against Liverpool, and that's Saturday, April the 1st. Nonto, back inside his own half. Toloi and a Cherby again exchanging passes that's been a very well ploughed furrow tonight back it goes towards Donnarumma 16 minutes to go Italy have made four changes England just the one so far with the Foden coming on Bellingham laying it back here Rice working it forth through the midfield but the two England goal scorers couldn't combine as Rice looked for Kane Nonto down the left hand side brought down by Spinazzola just committed Calvin Phillips who is looking visibly weary now Spinazzola again chance to try and take on Carl Walker and beat him and Walker did well having initially been bamboozled came back to cover then had a little nibble and Monto on the edge of the air he's got to be careful Monto guides it back Andy Lorenzo is going to be able to pick it up on the right hand touch line and try and get Italy going again with Verratti he's really making them tick now in the heart of the midfield Right hand side of the penalty area, cross comes in, great defensive header from the stretching stones, steered out only as far as Tonali, through a crown and that's blocked, and then Saka ducks his head in and he's caught by Nonto, and it is a free kick which will be taken by him about 10 yards outside the penalty area. Yeah, as I say, good block there by Stones, he's blocked two or three so far, just spread his body, putting those arms behind his back, just almost going down like a cricket fielder if you like you know and it's important that England don't, don't take chances at the back they try and move the Italians back into their half if they humanly can the attacking threat from England certainly not been here this half at all has it Jim no not at all while possession in the second half has been all Italy it was 61-39 at half-time in England's favour. It's now only 53-47. Uh, just mopping up the uh, the Carl Walker yellow card situation, incidentally. Uh, the first yellow card, I'm told, was actually shown to Jack Grealish, although it was reported that it had been shown to Walker. It was Grealish that uh, got it for maybe something that was said in the, the midst of that uh, midfield contretemps. And so it's Rice, Maguire, Grealish and Walker that have got yellow cards for England. Jorginho for Italy Calvin Phillips gets it back for Pickford Pickford will just side foot the ball to the edge of the penalty area 0371 722 3344 you can put your calls now for Sports Bar with uh, Jamie O'Hara and Jason Cundy what have you made of England and match management in the second half they hold on it will be a famous win but at the moment a feeling that they are doing exactly that they're holding on Walker can't stop the ball coming in and then it flashed across the edge of the six yard box Shaw came to meet it the Italian player went down it was Politano but Shaw didn't put him on the deck 
No appeals for a penalty, and it will be an England throw, which will be taken down by the corner flag with 13 minutes to go. England have got to get a grip of this. They certainly have. You're better off getting a grip now, as they say. Nonto, great play there on the wing. He's bumbled the ball across the front, and I've got to give uh, Shaw a lot of credit there. He just covered the run and just... My goodness me, referee. So that's another yellow card. Luke Shaw this time for time wasting. I, I, I don't know what he's expecting the England players to do. Yes, there is opportunity for England with a 2 1 lead and the, the clock ticking down for some match management. But he's not being consistent. We've seen two or three occasions that immediately come to mind of Italian players who haven't been booked taking longer about restarting play than their England counterparts have. That's three England players booked for time-wasting now. Saka's got the ball on the England right-hand side. And Maguire is down hurt. Play goes on with Kane, trying to slip the ball inside the area for Calvin Phillips. Italy will bring it away. Maguire is still down. Now the referee allows play to continue. England had an opportunity to put it out of play and didn't do so. Shaw steps across. He could be in big trouble here. He's picked up a yellow card for time-wasting. Is that deemed to be a sack of bookable offence? England might be down to ten men in a minute. The Italian players are making that very point to referee Ivanovic, who's fast losing control of this game. England are furious because Maguire was down hurt. England did have the opportunity with Maguire down hurt to put the ball out of play themselves, and they passed that up. But Kane feels that play should have stopped. Italy feel that Shaw should have been sent off for the foul, which stopped that Italian attack. Mancini is waving the imaginary yellow card in the air. Maybe the referee feels as though the, the first yellow card that he showed for time-wasting was a little bit harsh. I think Luke Shaw's going to get away with this. I think what tends to happen, Jim, they book them for time-wasting, then you can do anything you actually want and you don't get a second yellow in the main, you know? Or do you? He's gone, Jim. England down to ten, man. And the quality of refereeing decisions tonight is something that is going to be spoken about at length. Southgate is incandescent makes his way to the halfway line referee had given himself so much thinking time before producing that second yellow card for short in fairness I don't think there can be too many arguments about the validity of the second one I think we're going to see Trippier come on now he's going to have to fill in it seems as though he's gone to Trippier to play left back in front of Chilwell. I don't know what that tells you or what it doesn't tell you. So Trippier is going to come on. Gallagher actually was being readied and I think Gallagher probably would have replaced Phillips. But now Trippier is going to come on and as Shaw leaves the field, he's quite happy to vent his spleen to Novak Simovic, the fourth official. It'll be very interesting hearing Gareth Southgate's reaction to all of these yellow cards that have been dished out for time wasting. And he will be speaking to Talk Sports England correspondent Faye Carruthers pretty much immediately after the game. You will hear Gareth's reaction here on Talk Sport. And that is Foden coming off, Jim, isn't it? So Foden has been on the field for, well, it feels like a matter of seconds since he replaced Grealish and he's straight back off again. And Kieran Trippier will come on. A defensive minded change with England have to replace the now absent Shaw with a fullback, and Foden is the full guy. In comes the free kick. That's headed away by Calvin Phillips near the penalty spot. Goes out towards Tonali. Tonali on the right hand touchline will try and drive it in. It's blocked. It goes out of play of Trippier and out of play for a throw, which the Italians will take down by the corner flag. It's taken back for Verratti. Verratti 10 yards outside the penalty area. England in such complete control of this at half time and now hanging on grimly to a 2 1 lead and down to 10 men. Here's Verratti. 
Verratti goes out towards the right-hand touchline. Nearly everybody inside the England penalty area. Di Lorenzo will try and get it across. It's blocked. Tonali goes for the acrobatic. Didn't really get hold of it. England hammer it away. Upfield anywhere will do. Eight minutes to go. But it's going to be a stack of stoppage time to be added on. Rhys James and Conor Gallagher will be on next for England. Italy have it again. It's attack against defence. Defence just about holding out at the moment. Tonali with a little touch. Declan Rice is back there. Kane is back there. But they played round them. The England fans find their voice. Their team need them. Spinazzola. High cross in from him. Straight through to Jordan Pickford. It's 2-1 to England. Down to 10 men after Shaw's dismissal. Seven minutes to go. It's amazing. This is top quality international football, to be fair, in regard to two teams, two very good sides coming together. And you can't call a result. You know, 2-0 at half-time, people think these games are over. One goal, the change that we've seen, two such contrasting halves in the fortunes of England and Italy. Saka to his left hand side for Bellingham we try to thread the ball back through for Saka inside the Italian penalty area he couldn't get it through Di Lorenzo prods it away seven minutes plus could easily be seven minutes of stoppage time for England to hold on here so you would have to rely I would imagine for about another 13-14 minutes of action on Talk Sport Monto getting the ball in punched away by the flying Pickford falls on the edge of the area for Politano then for Verratti Politano jimmying it back in Lonto coming onto it, pulls it back. No offside flag there. England were appealing for one. And it comes down again for Spinazzola. Lonto will try and get towards the byline. Walker stops that happening. Saka back in defensive duty, intercepts the next pass. All he can do is chip it out of play. England will now make a double change. Italy trying to take the throw quickly enough to stop that happening but they can't Saka will come off and Rhys James will replace him so that's another defensive minded change and Jude Bellingham is going to be replaced by Conor Gallagher it's Stuart Pearce you know I mean Bellingham uh, started the game with a heavy strapping on his left knee and I think in that last well I think this this change was always going to happen but certainly I think him kicking the ball in the last attack that he had given the ball away certainly has, has flexed that knee by the looks of things and he's limping quite badly so are England going to switch to a five now with Walker at centre half and Rhys James at right back in a five or is James going to effectively play as a right winger ahead of Walker in the same position that Bukayo Saka had I, I think that will look more like a five England are going to get penned back into a five anyway so um, they've obviously seen Nonto as, as a bit of a problem I think it'd almost be a 5-3-2 a 5-3-1 scenario here 5-3-1-0 because England are having to play so deep Kane is the one and he is still 20 yards behind the ball that's Sherby Tonali Verratti Gallagher in there was he fouled by Verratti he was England can't waste too much time in taking the free kick but they do have a free kick and Gallagher is down and uh, in need of a little bit of treatment but this is just about breaking up the play five minutes plus stoppage time to go and the ten men of England lead 2-1 no time for the full assessment of the second half performance Stuart comes after the end of the game of course but this is Dare I say, in inverted commas, old England, the way that they haven't really been able to deal with the Italians in this second period from a, a position of high command. Yeah, I mean, the first half we were so in command and the Italians look as though they were ready to fold. But as always, if you don't secure the game, and we had opportunities at the end of the first half with, with opportunities to score the third, I think that would have put the game to bed totally. There's always an opportunity, and uh, credit to the Italians, they've not given up on it, and they've come after England, and uh, we've still got probably, I would suggest, somewhere in the region the best part of ten minutes potentially, maybe uh, slightly less, to, to hang on to this game. Another game in this group, incidentally, North Macedonia leading Malta 2-1, Portugal 4 up against Liechtenstein, Denmark have retaken the lead against Finland.
ball has gone out of play for a goal kick so the other scores Bosnia and Herzegovina 3 Iceland 0 Denmark 2 Finland 1 North Macedonia 2 Malta 1 Portugal 4 Liechtenstein 0 San Marino 0 Northern Ireland 2 Slovakia Luxembourg's goalless but this one England down to 10 men after Luke Shaw was sent off uh, two yellow cards in the space of two minutes but they lead by two goals to one three minutes plus stoppage time to go and the final Italian change and we'll see Scamacca come on Nonto with a layoff for uh, Brian Cristante Cristante goes back for Toloi Di Lorenzo out to the Italian right hand side the uh, diminutive Politano with a clever reverse ball Gallagher does enough to make sure that Di Lorenzo's cross doesn't find a man but he's deflected it behind onto the running track for a corner that Italy will take over on the far touchline possession now in the uh, game as a whole almost exactly 50-50 the Italian change will see Verratti off and Scamacca on yeah, they've certainly won him on before this corner's taken Skamaka. Certainly his aerial threat coming on. And they've got some punch up front now. So that's the final change for Italy. England do still have one left. And they've still got Henderson, Dyer, Chilwell, Gerhi, Madison and Tony that they can call upon. We're in the 89th minute and it's an Italian corner and Tonali goes across to offer himself for a short one so two Italian players standing by the quarter in fact Tonali is going to take the responsibility here Monto waits on the edge of the D he's unmarked Gallagher is keeping an eye on Di Lorenzo on the edge of the penalty area it's fired in he's taken a couple of ricochets off Italian players and another corner is given Claims from the England players that that should have been a goal kick. Uh, but when a corner was given, there was no real fury, so maybe it is the correct decision. England fans again finding their voice. England's defenders have to hold their nerve. In comes the corner headed away at the near post. Back out towards Politano. Tonali in towards the near post again. Kane can scoop it clear on the half volley. It would mean so much more to break the record in an away win in Italy rather than on a night where England have blown a 2-0 lead can his teammates make that happen for him Italy again trying to work it forward pacing it down the right hand side Maguire sticks out the foot ball goes off the island and out of play for another Italian throw 30 seconds of normal time remaining I'm expecting 7 to be added but we'll get confirmation of what it's going to be very short it could be more here's Nonto right footed ball in from him that one headed away again by the England back line it was Trippier that got his head to it and now England will be able to break and get it forward towards Kane and the fourth official has got the numbers ball in his hand and will soon know oh Kane's done really well skips around Sonali's actually only five which is good news as far as England are concerned ball out of play for a throw down by the Italian corner flag and the Italians have taken it quickly. It's 2-1 to England on talk sport. They're down to 10 men. They're holding on grimly, but still holding on. Yeah, they certainly are. As I say, they camp back in. It's a solid formation. It's, it's that block of five there. With James just sat in front of Walker. And uh, to be fair, it's the balls that are tossed in the box that they've got to defend well. Make sure there's no gaps between those three central defenders. They look for the feet of Rotegi with Vescovaca making a dummy run for it. It's clear. Comes out towards Wilfred Nonto, left-hand side of the penalty area. Calvin Phillips still on the field. Just gets it 50 yards away from his own penalty area. That will do under the circumstances. Donnarumma comes out the field it, and the first of the five added minutes have now elapsed. Four to go. England hanging on in Italy, not for the first time in their history. Remember that very famous 0-0 draw. Kane has been brought down, that'll be a yellow card. And England have some respite, Kane's going to need some treatment. And it's a Cherby who's in the book. Yeah, it's a poor challenge, but Harry Kane's so, so intelligent. He just slows down a little bit, gives the defenders a little bit of encouragement and says, you're going to get there before me. And then just a little burst of pace, just draws the free kick, breaks the game. And valuable respite for the England back line. will come 
forward. And just very subtly moved the positioning of the ball. He's not on a yellow card and might be tempted to uh, try and test the referee's patience. He takes the free kick, four towards Kane on the right-hand edge of the penalty area. It's all about who wins the second ball. It was Tonali, got it away from Calvin Phillips. Di Lorenzo gets it away from Conor Gallagher, who's... Uh, industriously won it back, he's done really well and then Rice can bring it forward for England down on the left hand touchline is Gallagher Gallagher lays it back from Skamaka the West Ham striker chasing England go all the way back for Pickford Pickford sweeps it out towards Walker lets the ball run across his body toes it down the line for James James back for Walker, Walker to Stones Stones whacks it forward and it almost hits the pit side cameraman who's Hammer is trained non-stop on Gareth Southgate at the moment. 2-1, 2 England, 2 and a half minutes to go. England down to 10 men after Shaw's dismissal. Leading after a brilliant first half. Second half has been somewhat less than brilliant, but it'll be a great result if England can hold on. Tonali. 15 outside the penalty area, should be Pickford, it is, an Italian player goes down inside the penalty area, claiming that he was a shove there by Trippier, but play is going to go on, and England uh, just over 90 seconds away. Yeah, there's very, very little the Italians won't claim isn't the penalty now, and that's been the case, just Trippier just coming in the back, but the ball was way too far away from him, comfortably in Pickford's hands. Italy mop up on the edge of their own penalty area take a step back to try and bring it forward again we played 3 minutes and 45 seconds of the 5 additional minutes how are your nerves feeling? shredded and just about there but not there yet now it's played four for Politano in the England penalty area he's laid it back out for Brian Cristante Tonali Tonali clipping it to the bottom right hand corner of the penalty area Di Lorenzo with a little give and go it's worked back across the edge of the box for Monto who's heavy touch stopped him getting into a shooting position Spinazzola mops up he's gone back for Tonali Italy patiently probing across the edge of the penalty area now they're working in Skamaka attacks it England win it headed away get it clear and England have done exactly that with Kane just trying to chip it forward to make sure that Donnarumma has got to chase a long way to win it 30 seconds of the five minutes to go in from Spinazzola and deep headed up in the air Baratagi, it'll go back outside the area, work back in. Stone sends that one away. Gallagher needs to get it clear and puts his foot through it and will get it towards halfway. Yeah, they need to uh, string some passes together at the moment. The last four or four clearances have just gone up the pitch and been returned. Five minutes are up. Spinazzola towards the edge of the penalty area. Phillips, no foul. Referee puts his whistle to his mouth and he will have won. Of controversy of a record and a gutsy resistance. It was the good and the bad at times of England, but the bottom line is that the most difficult game in the group has been navigated successfully. And on the night in which Harry Kane broke the all time goal scoring record, England win away to Italy for the first time since 1961. What a passport that could be to qualification and good times ahead. Boy, did they have to work for it. The controversial dismissal of Luke Shaw, who received one of three yellow cards that was shown to an England player for time wasting, certainly put England under the pump for the last 15 minutes. As brilliant as they've been in the first half, they lost control of the game in the second, but they've hung on the win. A famous, famous victory in Naples on a famous night for Harry Kane. Italy 1, England 2. And, and England get off to a great start in their qualifying campaign. Fantastic from England in terms of the result, but honestly, they've got to do it more comfortably than that. I can't stand this all the way through the qualifying campaign. Gareth Southgate told these England players they need to start beating blue chip teams well they've done that tonight 
But blimey. They did not make it easy for themselves. I can tell you that Luke Shaw is inside the stadium, in the bowels of the stadium. He's been watching the game, absolutely fuming about the red card he received. The first yellow was for time-wasting. Apparently the referee thought he'd kick the ball away. He didn't kick it away, it clipped the top of the hoardings. Terrible refereeing at times in the second half. Italy came out, as we said at half-time they would, in that second half and really gave it a go. They upped their performance and England seemed to shrink into themselves. And in the middle of all that, Harry Kane broke the England goal-scoring record. So. There's a mixture of emotions there, Stuart Pearce. Some really good things to look back on. A record broken and a victory in arguably the most toughest game in this qualifying campaign that England have got. They've got off to a flyer, but that second half performance will raise a lot of questions and justifiably so. Yeah, listen, from the offset of this game, mate, I thought it was going to be a tight affair, a draw, the odd goal one way or the other. It's turned out that way. It's just how we got to that uh, end result. And we'd have all took a, a victory, there's no doubt, before the game. And it's a brilliant, brilliant victory for us on the road, as you rightly say. Harry Kane breaking the goal-scoring record. Some great play in the first half. We didn't kill an Italian team off that were absolutely on their knees. A miss by Grealish, a miss by Phillips. And, and that become costly eventually in regard to the scheme of the game in the second half. But the bottom line is, we've come to Italy, we've won, we've got three points in the first game, and we don't often beat teams that are ranked above us, and we've just done so. Yeah, it, it, and that is a, is a key point. It's a big criticism of Gareth Southgate in his England tenure. There's lots to be positive about, but the fact that we don't regularly beat sides that are above us in the rankings, for example, and, and this is one of those games where we've actually done it, He's right, he got the team together on Monday. A big meeting saying you've got to start doing it, and they have started to do it. Let's see if they can carry on doing it as well. But in terms of qualifying, top two qualify in the group automatically for the Euros. And you can you could possibly say England are, are halfway there, if not more, having won here in Naples tonight. They picked Naples to intimidate us, it didn't work. Calvin Phillips, I'm just watching him walk across the track now, hobble across the track. I can't believe he's lasted that long in the game the England fans to our right all boxed into a little section that's uh, um, cordoned off from the rest of the uh, Italy fans in this stadium Calvin Phillips just waves to them again he's appreciating their support but how on earth has he lasted 90 minutes he doesn't do it at Premier League level for his club Manchester City yet he's lasted 90 minutes he has done and we've won the game you can't really criticise but you were saying you know, what, an hour into the game, you know, it's about time we made a change and, and Calvin needs to come off because he doesn't regularly play 90 minutes. Yeah, um, I mean, credit to him. Uh, let's be honest with you, he, he scored under Bielsa, so he knows what it's like to do the hard miles and the hard kilometres in games. There's no doubt about that. Credit to him. And that, for him, will give him a massive lift. You can see him coming off, clapping the England fans. That will give him a great lift, playing 90-odd minutes uh, in this game for England, a victory in Italy. And I think it will give the squad that little bit of confidence as well bear, bear in mind the game before this we got beat by the way and went out of a, of a World Cup so for Gareth to get the squad together go to Italy win the game a lot he'll have to sit with his coaches and decode this how could we have done better in the second half in the first half I'm not sure they could have done much better if I'm being honest it was fluent it was good on the eye in the first half and they should have been 3-0 up but there's a ruthlessness that also needs to be instilled into this England team Stuart isn't there because that chance in first half injury time for Jack Grealish he has to score that the Calvin Phillips one you're talking about I think that's the one where he could have rolled it to Harry Kane who, who was in and probably almost certainly with his finishing record would have scored Kane was fuming that he didn't get the ball yeah he was as I say he should have slipped Kane in if you don't slip Kane in you say I'm going to take the shot on myself you cannot miss the target from 18 metres out Harry Kane then had that chance well should have had that chance he was fuming that he didn't get the opportunity from Calvin Phillips what he has done is broken the record we'll talk more about that in a bit but he must be absolutely elated inside that he has got that record and bearing in mind how long it took Wayne Rooney to break Bobby Charlton's record and the fact that he's 29, it looks to me like it could be some time before Harry Kane's record is broken. 
Well, you would certainly look that way, and more to the fact that you don't see too many uh, forwards putting him under pressure for his place, let alone <laughs> scoring goals. You've got to put him out the team first to get the opportunity to score a goal. Yeah, Bobby Charlton had the record, firstly for a year before Jimmy Greaves broke it, then Bobby won it back, and he had it for 47 years. Uh, then until Wayne Rooney broke it. Wayne's had it for seven and a half years. Harry Kane, I think, will have it potentially for decades because he's on 54. Can make a case for him finishing at least in the 70s. Maybe a little bit more than that. How long is it going to be before that gets broken? Well, it could well be beyond our lifetime, I think. Well, Harry Kane will come off the pitch and eventually find out some news that might have a little bit of an impact on him at club level. Big news across Europe tonight. Bayern Munich have sacked Julian Nagelsmann, their coach. Thomas Tuchel has been installed as the Bayern Munich manager amidst all the talk of Thomas Tuchel potentially replacing Antonio Conte at Spurs. Well, that's not going to happen. Tuchel's in at Bayern Munich. Bayern led but lost to Leverkusen at the weekend. Dortmund top in the Bundesliga, but Munich are still in the Champions League so uh, extraordinary events at Bayern Munich tonight Nagelsmann sacked and Tuchel has taken over England have won 2-1 here in Naples Harry Kane has broken the England goal scoring record live on TalkSport and Northern Ireland got themselves a win as well TalkSport's Graham Courtney yeah finished